Are you tired of staring at the backs of your children's heads because their eyes are glued to their screens? Then it might be time for a change. Hi, I'm Michelle Porcelli and I'm an elementary school counselor. I'm excited to share with you some unconventional wisdom and tips and tricks on how to bring harmony back into your home. You might find it ironic, but recently we have found that phones and electronics actually help students feel safe and connected and confident during pandemics and other times they may feel unsure, scared, or disconnected. However, now we have another issue. When to know when it's time to turn the electronics off. Some children and adults struggle letting go of their devices because it's been their safety net and their connection. But when it's time to turn to real life connections, sometimes we forget how to even make eye contact and talk face to face. Some are satisfied with their online relationships and forego real life connections. Elaine Schneider, author of Seven Strategies for Raising Calm, Inspired, and Successful Children says, they are so attached to technology at such an early age, it's changing their brain circuitry. So what's the answer? Well, here's some tips for helping kids learn how to unplug and reconnect. Tip one, model behavior. You are your child's first teacher. You're responsible for setting the standards within your home and within your family, and that extends to electronics. Show kids how to put devices down and turn off screens. Have conversations, foster relationships, and help kids use their imaginations. Play, sing, interact, read together. Your behavior shapes their behavior. Educate yourself about electronics. For example, overuse of electronic games keeps your brain excited and in a state of hyperarousal, where those so-called feel-good hormones are being released constantly. Well, that sounds good. However, you start to crave that feeling, almost like a drug high, and it makes you want to play the games more and more. It becomes distracting, stressful, and can affect our decision-making, impulse control, our moods, and even our relationships. Overuse produces many of the behaviors that we see in attention deficit disorders and other types of addictions. But there is evidence that reducing screen time can return brain chemistry to normal levels. Create technology-free zones. It's about balance and moderation and knowing what your child is doing and with whom. It can be recommended to create screen-free zones like keeping the television or other electronics out of bedrooms. You can choose your zones. Set aside times to unplug. Maybe don't allow electronic use during mealtime and shut off screens at least one hour before bedtime. Also be sure to spend device-free time with your children daily. No interruptions and no exceptions. Use parental controls. Be aware of ratings on games, on Netflix, Hulu, et cetera, and even Disney shows that they're viewing. As a parent, you get to decide what you will not only allow into your home, but what you will allow into your children's minds. No expert, not even me, knows your child better than you do. You are the expert and it's okay to say no. Talk to kids about the dangers of too much screen time. You, did you know what apps are on their phone? Do you even know how TikTok works? And sometimes many sexual predators use these apps and other ways to communicate with your child. Are you aware of the games they're playing? Who are they talking to and how much time is spent on Netflix or with texting? Also, if you have a conversation with your child about electronics, take the emotion out of it and just talk factually. Let them know you have confidence in them that they can not only handle electronics, but trust they will make good decisions about electronics. Talk with them about signs of knowing electronics or negatively affect them. These signs could be that their eyes are tired, they're sleepy or bored or irritable. Maybe they're jealous of a friend's Instagram post or angry at losing an online game and they take it out on someone else. Give them power to recognize how they react to electronics to make wise decisions. Maybe even share a time when you realized yourself that you were caught up in electronics. Maybe there was a time you ignored making dinner or spending time with the family. You arrived late to a performance. Apologize to them and move on. Let them see that you're still willing to learn too. Offer alternative activities. 
This is especially important for young children. Engage them in books, games, talking, biking, meal prep, dog walking, arts and crafts projects, and so on. Take electronics vacations, even short ones count, where everyone unplugs and disconnects. Make it a contest to see who can disconnect the, uh, the longest. Offer a prize to the winner. The bottom line is you are in control and our children can make wise decisions and we can be confident in them to do that. It's all about safety, connection, and confidence. I hope you've enjoyed these tips and tricks. I'm sure you have many of your own that work. Thanks for watching.